The title of my project is Pneumonia Detection Using Chest X-ray. The application of uh, machine learning, deep learning or artificial intelligence has increased tremendously in the field of medicals over a past few years. Especially if we see a subfield of medical imaging in which we try to analyze the images of X-ray, CCGs and other technologies to diagnose diseases or ailments in uh, the patients. Uh, there is a lot of usage of machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms to analyze and diagnose images. My project also focuses on a very small application of convolutional neural network wherein I am trying to analyze the X-ray images to detect whether the uh, patient has pneumonia or not. So let us first have a small look on a simple UI which has two component. One is the input field, a simple image input field and other is the output label field. So for this uh, video purpose, I've collected some of the random samples and trying to put it into the system. So let us just um, analyze that uh, like how are these X-ray images uh, classified. So this particular very clear image wherein we cannot see any obligation or um, um, access uh, things in this uh, in this particular region of chest is characterized as normal that this person with this x-ray uh, do not have pneumonia we can have one more example this x-ray also looks very perfect very clear and it's also um, categorized as normal we can have more random examples so as compared to the previous two images this this particular image looks a little fuzzy around the lower regions of the x-ray and it is also characterized as pneumonic. We can have one more random sample. It looks more uh, e even more fuzzier than the previous uh, two to three inputs and is char char characterized as pneumonic. So this particular application can be very useful at the times where x-rays are fed into the systems and uh, a, a detection is made that whether x-ray is, is of a normal person or a pneumonic person. So let us have a look at the implementation of uh, my project. So in the very beginning we can see a sample image attached wherein in the left hand side there is a normal x-ray which is not at all fuzzy it is very clear around the ribs and uh, the spinal cord but if we see uh, the pneumonic x-rays it, it it they are a little fuzzier and uh, they are more diffused as comparison to the left image so that is what we tried to predict I started with importing some of the li important libraries. Number one is um, matplotlib and seaborn for data visualizations. Keras and Escalon for my model and uh, evaluation matrices. CV2 for data processing. Uh, OS for accessing the data as data directories. NumPy pandas for processing and Gradio for UI. I start up with data pre-processing. So the number one step in data pre-processing I'll be doing is data, col uh, data input. So the advantage which I felt of using Kaggle notebooks in my project and just not a simple Jupyter notebook in Google um, uh, Colab is the data I was working on is pretty large. The input we can see is 1.24 gigabytes and the output can go up to 20 gigabytes uh, depending on um, how much I tried to predict or how many times actually I ran my model for prediction. So instead of downloading this whole data set um, onto my local system or uh, another thing is downloading onto my local system and then uploading it somewhere to get direct access. I can save that um, storage um, by, by using Kaggle notebooks. So in this particular cell, I'm trying to get the data directories and data into my system, into um, my notebook. I've made a small list of uh, two labels, which I'm having pneumonia and normal. I am fixing my image size to 150 pixels and defining a function get underscore data, which takes as input a data directory, a local data directory, and returns our NumPy array collection of 
um, my data. I am calling this function three times, one for train data set, uh, testing data set and validation data set. In this particular cell, I am trying to split my X and Y labels for all the three training validation and testing data set. Every um, variable train test and validate contains two features, uh, like uh, two variables in, on two indices. First is feature and another is label. Just appending the features in the X um, variables, X underscore train, X underscore test and X underscore validation and labels uh, in the Y part. So here in my data, the features are the images. As we all know, when we try to work on images, they are stored as matrices, accordingly colored and um, black and white matrices are stored. And labels are pretty much very simple, zero and one, uh, zero for normal and one for pneumonia. In this cell, <coughs> I've tried to distinguish between the positives and negatives that is i'm trying to count the um, number of or append the um, uh, mnemonic uh, data and the normal data into this list i did it for visualizing a very simple um, bar plot which gives me the count of uh, mnemonic x-rays mnemonic images and normal images in my data set as it is very much clear that uh, the mnemonic images uh, are more than the normal images, we need to do something with our data set, which is a very simple step of normalizing um, our data set to remove this biasness, which can be created uh, with the uh, which can be created um, by having a larger number of one class um, inputs. So. Um, as we can see that I normalized the data set and performed a simple grayscale normalization to reduce the effect of illumination. So illumination can be characterized as this colored image which I have displayed of pneumonia and this gray image of, of the normal chest x-ray. So when we try to store a colored image, we, we basically make three matrices, each for every color, uh, RGB, red, green, and blue, which indirectly increases our size of the model as the size of the input features increases. So we can see the difference between the two. Uh, we can see the fuzz, fuzz clearly in the gray image and not in the colored image. So that is why I went on with grayscale normalization uh, to, to reduce this illumination effect. For feeding the images, for feeding the matrices into my CNN model, um, I have to resize it into, into uh, a vector, a simple tampi vector. Uh, and it, it can also be said as a column vector um, in case of Y labels. But if we talk about in case of X labels, they will be of um, size uh, which which I have specified which I have specified of the image that is I'm specifying the images to be 150 pixels into 150 pixels now CNNs by itself the convolutional neural network by itself do not take care of images uh, which have different rotation or are differently scaled or have um, different properties for that, we need to have data augmentation. If we do not consider data augmentation, we can result in overfitting problem, which can basically expand our data. So by simply altering the training data with small transformations, we can produce a lot of variations. Some of the popular augmentation um, techniques which are used in industries are grayscaling, which we did. Um, here in uh, the above part of our code, um, flipping the images horizontally and vertically, cropping them, um, removing or adding the color jitters, having some of the translations or rotations. In this particular um, project, I have I, I, I went on with rotating the images by 30 degrees, randomly zooming like uh, this, this rotation of images is also done on random samples and randomly picking some of the images and zooming to 20%, then random shift uh, of, of images to uh, like 10% of their total width 
and same goes with vertical shifting um, and then randomly flipping some of the images and randomly flipping uh, vertically flipping some of the images we can have data augmentation now comes the um, main part of of my project which is um, a model definition so a convolutional neural network is basically a deep neural network with some transformations in the very first line we are initializing the model as a sequential model and then we and then we go on by adding layers the very first layer we can see is a simple convolutional um layer with activation function as relu and an input shape of 150 cross 150 cross 1 which we defined um for our images experimentally it has been found that relu as an activation function works much um uh, much better than other activation functions in case of our nns the second layer which i have added is a normalization layer to deal with uh, the data and then the third layer is of max pooling so basically convolutional neural networks are made out of filters which which are feature detectors and they are location invariants so if you are trying to categorize this x ray this this particular x ray is normal or mnemonic so let us have an example that we are trying to identify this spinal cord so in filters what the cnn will do it will take this vertical um cell shape and try to identify this vertical cell shape in the image and it can take a lot of other features as well in terms of filters um which in, in which uh, this image can be classified so by data augmentation we actually increase we try to increase the efficiency of our model then um at 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 the end of every layer i'm doing a max pooling which is a way to reduce the dimension of matrix so max there are two types of pooling max and average i i have added max pooling here to generate a feature map and it it's just uh, picking out the maximum from the matrix window and again generating a feature map for the next layer my last layer is a dense layer of a uh, sigmoid activation function because i am trying to uh, do binary classification that is why i wanted to map my prediction into 0 or 1 and that's why i chose sigmoid as my activation function for the optimizer i am using rms prop and a loss of binary cross entropy which is the classic loss uh which we use in the case of binary classification here i have just compiled my model with uh these following properties in this particular cell i'm trying to uh, initialize a variable called learning rate reduction uh what it does is whenever it finds a plateau in in the epoch loss curve that is uh, a part a place where um at the increase of epochs my gradient is not increasing that i have reached a straight line that that my gradient is zero but it is not a minima then reduce my loss so that i can at least move on um at at different parts um of of my gradient and here i have tried to fit my model fit my cnn uh, with only 10 epochs uh, in the very initial stage i tried Uh, going with 30 epochs uh, but eventually due to the uh, limitation of my hardware i could not do it so i limited my epochs to 10 which took me around um uh 2 to 2 and a half hours to train um per training and then for my ease i uh, i saved my model into the local directory of kaggle the accuracy of my model comes out to be 92.46% and the loss comes out to be 0.23% which is uh, pretty decent here in this cell i've tried to visualize my accuracy um and the th this is the accuracy uh, versus apox curve and this is the uh, loss um uh, testing loss and accuracy per apox curve so in the training we can see that the training accuracy increases as we increase the epoch but there comes a time for validation accuracy which which is pretty strange 
um, this this happens because of the data variation and augmentation that we do for processing. But in testing, we can see that the loss, that the training loss remains a little constant, which is uh, a pretty good thing because it's pretty low. And the validation loss comes, uh, faces a steeper slope um, at the loss site. A simple prediction, this model dot predict uh, function gives me the probability uh, which, uh, which the sigmoid function gives us. And then I have just uh, to put a threshold value of 0.5 and merge it to 1 or 0 according to my needs. And then I've put on a classification report which gives me precision recall F1 score and support. It's pretty good, it's pretty decent of 0 0.93 and 0 0.92. The recall, uh, weighted average of recall is 0.92 and they're all above 90%. Then the confusion matrix which is a standard evaluation matrix for binary classification um, given. Uh, categorizes my uh, false positives which are pretty low 19 and false negatives is 28 um, out of out of I guess 650 to 670 uh, validation or testing uh, data set then this particular uh, function uh, is 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 used to predict one particular image which in my UI I take it as input and give this to uh, my function pneumonia prediction and returns a static uh, class normal or pneumonic um, according to if it is less than 0 0.5 I'll tell it as normal and if it is greater than 0 0.5 I'll tell it as pneumonic. And this particular cell defines the input and output for my UI and this is the interface and the launch of interface for um, my Gradio UI. And we can also access a very um, tiny bit of my mnemonic detection using test X-ray Gradio UI. And if we run it, again, we can have a local URL and a public URL, which is available for 72 hours. And we can have a small uh, application of my mnemonic detector uh, using CNN. So this was my project based on convolutional neural network with an accuracy of 90%, classifying the chest X-rays as normal or mnemonic. Thank you so much.